In this video, we're going to talk about five technical skills that are required for cybersecurity and where you can learn them. Cybersecurity is such a big field and it's hard to know which skills are required to even be able to do the job or even get hired in the first place. And there are many courses out there that teach you all sorts of skills. So I'm here today to summarize them all and tell you what's essential. Everything will be timestamped down below, so if you're already familiar with one technical skill and need to skip ahead to another, you can easily do so. Let's jump straight into it. So starting us off, we have programming and scripting. Now, many cyber attacks exploit bugs and flaws in code. So by learning how to code, you can better understand these vulnerabilities and how they might be exploited. Cybersecurity often involves repetitive tasks like scanning networks, analyzing logs, or even just responding to incidents. So scripting languages like Python, Bash, or PowerShell can allow you to automate these tasks, saving time and reducing human error. And Python is regarded as one of the most valuable programming languages, especially in the field of cybersecurity, because its syntax is clear and concise, and it's a versatile language that can be used across various domains within cybersecurity. Whether you're working on network security, web application security, or even just pen testing, Python has libraries and frameworks to support all of these areas, so it's definitely a key one to learn. Finally, we then have security tools integration. So many security tools and frameworks are either built with or support Python. For example, the Metasploit framework, which is a popular penetration testing tool. So it's very good to get familiar with something like Python or the others that I mentioned because they will come in handy for many areas of your cybersecurity career. Next topic we then have is operating systems. So the examples are like Windows, Linux and Mac OS. Understanding system architecture like operating systems can serve as the foundation for computing environments. Learning how Windows and Linux are designed, including their architecture and kernel structures, helps you gain a deep understanding of the underlying systems they are securing. This then nicely leads on to security configuration and hardening. So having knowledge of operating systems allows you to configure and harden the systems effectively, which includes things like setting up user accounts, managing permissions, configuring firewalls, or even just implementing security policies. This leads on to the final point of incident response. So when a security incident occurs, such as like a breach or a compromise, having that knowledge and understanding of the intricacies of the underlying operating system is vital for effective incident response and digital forensics. We'll touch on that more later, but this knowledge essentially helps you in analyzing Windows system logs, identifying malicious activities and conducting forensic investigations. So for example, if your organization is using a SIEM tool, you might be ingesting some Windows logs. And if you have the knowledge around the operating system, then you know exactly what you're looking for in those logs and you understand the activity that you're seeing. And a lot of this information can be tricky if you're seeing it for the first time, which is why I've added this great course in. There's lots online when you're searching that can teach you hundreds of different cybersecurity skills. But this course specifically by Simply Learn probably have one of the best online boot camps that I've come across. Its duration is over six months, it's all online, and they have cohorts starting whenever you're available. There's been over 10,000 learners already enrolled, which just gives you that confidence, especially alongside that 4.5 star rating, that it's a good course. All the framework inside is aligned to CompTIA, EC Council, and CISP, which are highly regarded in cybersecurity. You can see that you'll be given an official EC Council kit, you'll get hands-on learning, simulation tests, and also be able to apply your learning, which is very important, especially in the cybersecurity world. You'll get lifetime access to self-paced learning, but if you are looking at prerequisites, they do say an undergraduate degree or a high school diploma will be required. In terms of the learning path, you can see they split up everything so you can preview it beforehand just to give yourself that confidence it's got what you need. And just having a look at the breakdown of the Security Plus, we can see it goes through a number of different modules like cryptography, steganography, public key infrastructure, key management, security operations, security architecture. You'll cover all sorts of skills like network security, disaster recovery, all of which are important in cybersecurity. So if you're interested, do click the link in the description. And if you need more information on financing it, it's all on the website and easy for you to dive into, whether that's paying in full or paying through different options like finance.
So now that you have an example of where to learn these skills, let's jump back to the next topic that we have, which is networking. So every cybersecurity operation from data transmission to user authentication all relies on the underlying network infrastructure. So understanding how networks function is essential for securing them. Knowing how they're structured will help you identify and comprehend the potential attack surface. And this includes things like understanding network topologies, devices, protocols, as it's all essential and crucial for recognizing vulnerabilities and potential points of entry for attackers. This proficiency that you'll have in networking will then allow you to detect normal or abnormal patterns in behavior within network traffic, as you'll probably know that many cyber attacks target network infrastructure. So for example, like distributed denial of service or even man in the middle attacks. So any anomalies such as like unusual data flows or unexpected connections can really indicate that there's a serious security incident ongoing and understanding that networking infrastructure really helps you in identifying these signs. That nicely leads us on to secure network design, which as a cybersecurity professional, you'll need to design or at least understand how to implement secure network architectures. That's because knowledge of these principles is vital for creating robust and segmented networks, especially when it comes to things like implementing secure zones to ensure that data flows are controlled to minimize the attack opportunities. And often, even in my role today, we're usually asked to give advice on best practices. So it's basically key to know and understand what you're talking about, as you might not be doing it yourself, but you're usually asked to advise on it. This leads to our next topic, which is malware threats. So understanding the different types of malware is probably the most obvious skill that you'll need in cybersecurity. Knowing the difference between viruses, worms, trojans, ransomware, as you'll be dealing with these on a daily, and you need to really know the difference. Following this, learning how malware spreads is another key skill in this chain. So you, for example, it could be via phishing emails, software vulnerabilities, social engineering, and learning about all of these in detail and how attackers can abuse them to spread their malware is definitely essential for responding to the threats in the first place. You need to know the different attack methods an attacker can use. Which leads on to our final one, which is detection. So as a cybersecurity professional, you'll need to know how to detect these types of malware. So that might be through configuring firewalls, endpoint detection systems, or just creating alerts in a SIEM tool that your organization has. All of these points are just as important as each other, as if you know the knowledge behind it, but you don't know how to actually detect this, you'll never know what's happening in your environment. So you'll be blind to any malicious activity. So you need to know the types of malware, how it spreads and just how to detect it. That will lead on to incident management, which is the final topic. So now that you know how to find malware, what it is and where to detect it, you'll need to know how to deal with this and what the next steps are. So that takes us into immediate actions. We've briefly touched on already detecting the malware, so the next steps would be knowing what to do. So taking a stereotypical approach, it will be most likely to isolate a system. So you need to know how to do this and what to do in this situation. Immediately isolating an infected system from the network can prevent the spread of malware even further and limit the damage. Therefore, learning how and when to do this is very important in any type of attack as time is always key. Following on from this, having a well-defined incident response plan allows you to quickly and effectively respond to malware outbreak, as it will allow you to minimize impact. So you'll need to learn what one is and what it should include. Generically, these will contain steps like preparation, identification, containment, eradication, and recovery. So it's good to know each breakdown, what you do at each step, and exactly what's involved at each step, especially if you're working in this area. That covers all the key skills that we have today. And if you're interested in cybersecurity, I've got a big Discord community with over a thousand members where we all discuss cybersecurity and just help each other out on different topics. So do click the link in the description if you're interested. If you've enjoyed the video or it's helped you in any way, do leave a like down below. It massively helps it out and tells me that you're enjoying this type of content.